In this classroom, there are two boys and four girls. Let's compare them using something powerful, ratios. A ratio compares two or more quantities. It's like saying how many of this compared to that. We can say the ratio of boys to girls is two to four. Or we can represent the ratio by putting a two, a colon, and then four. Or we can represent the ratio as a fraction. These are the three ways to write a ratio. By using words, a colon, or as a fraction. All three representations are saying the same thing. The ratio of boys to girls is two to four. By the way, if you prefer, the ratio can also be given as girls to boys. To do that, you'll need to switch the order of the numbers from two to four to four to two. So the order in which the numbers are stated is very important. For the time being, let's keep the ratio as boys to girls, which is two to four. Just like fractions, we can simplify ratios. To simplify a ratio, we divide the numbers in the ratio by their highest common factor. In this case, the largest number that can divide into both two and four is two. So we divide both numbers in the ratio by two to put the ratio in its simplest terms, that's one to two. So the ratio two to four is simplified as one to two. This means that for each boy in the class, there are two girls. This means that two to four and one to two are equivalent ratios. In other words, they show the same relationship. What if the ratio is given and you wanna find the actual quantities? For example, there are 15 people in a room. The ratio of men to women is one to two. How many are women? There are a few ways to figure this out. We know the sum of the parts in the ratio is three. So one method is to divide the total number of persons into groups of three. We can divide the total number of people by three in order to find out how many groups of three are in the room. Now 15 divided by three is five. So there are five groups of three. The ratio of men to women is one to two, which means for every man, there are two women. That means in each group, we have one man and two women. So that means we have a total of five men and 10 women. The second method is way faster. The ratio of men to women is one to two. The women part of the ratio is two and the sum total of both parts of the ratio is three. So this means that two thirds of the total are women. So two thirds times 15 is 10. So there are 10 women in the room. Here's a problem with a three parts ratio. A total of $1,800 is to be shared among three friends, Paul, Rob, and Darren, in the ratio two to three to four. What is Paul's share? Paul's part of the ratio is two. The sum total of all three parts of the ratio is nine. So this means that Paul's share is two ninths of the total sum of money. Two ninths times $1,800 is $400. So Paul's share is $400, which by the way is the smallest amount. A proportion is an equation in which two ratios are set equal to each other. Proportion is used to find an unknown quantity whenever a ratio is scaled. For example, Jane is baking cakes that require a flour to egg mixture ratio of four to five. If she plans to use 12 cups of flour, how many cups of egg mixture will she need for the recipe? The ratio of flour to egg mixture is four to five. This means for every four cups of flour, Jane needs five cups of egg mixture. Jane has 12 cups of flour, so the new ratio will have 12 in the flour part. Let's leave the egg part of the new ratio blank for the time being. One way to solve this is to ask yourself, what number was multiplied to the four in the original ratio in order to get 12 in the new ratio? That's three. 
Therefore, we now need to multiply the egg part of the ratio by the same 3 in order to keep the ratio equivalent. 3 times 5 is 15. So Jane needs 15 cups of egg to go with her 12 cups of flour. An alternative method is writing the original ratio as a fraction. The ratio of cups of flour to egg is 4 to 5, so we write 4 to 5 as fraction. We then equate it to an equivalent ratio that has 12 cups of flour in the numerator, since the first part of the ratio represents cups of flour. The second part of the ratio represents cups of egg. It's the value that we don't know and is trying to find. So we call in N, or X, or whatever you want. Let's call it N. To solve this equation, we can multiply both sides of the equation by the product of the two denominators, that's 5N in, which gives the same result as the shortcut method of cross-multiplying. Hence, we get 4N1 equals 60. Divide both sides by 4, and we get an equals 15. The same answer as before. Jack is mixing concrete to lay bricks. The cement to sand ratio should be one to three. If Jack has three bags of cement, how many bags of sand should he use? We could use any of the two methods used in the previous example to solve this problem. The ratio of cement to sand is one to three, which means that for every bag of cement, he needs three bags of sand. We know that Jack has three bags of cement, which means that the cement part of the new ratio is three. To get this three means, the cement part of the original ratio is multiplied by three. So we also need to multiply the sand part of the original ratio by three to keep the ratio equivalent. So the sand part of the new ratio is nine. Hence the ratio one to three is equivalent to the ratio three to nine. Therefore, Jack will need nine bags of sand to mix with his three bags of cement. Practice doing this same problem with the fraction method and see if the answer is the same nine. The scale used by maps makes use of the concept of ratios to explore the world. For example, Nick and Ron are traveling to the other side of town. The scale of the map is one to 50,000, which means that every centimeter on the map is 50,000 centimeters on the actual ground. The distance from point X to point Y on the map is 6.5 centimeters. What is the actual distance? So the distance on the map is 6.5 centimeters. Hence we put 6.5 on the left under map distance. We do not know the actual distance. So we leave the space on the right-hand side blank for the time being. That's what we're trying to find. One way to solve this is to determine what number was multiplied to 1 in the original ratio to get 6.5 in the new ratio. That's 6.5. So the map distance part of the ratio was multiplied by 6.5. Therefore, to keep the ratio equivalent, we also need to multiply the other part of the ratio by 6.5. So 50,000 times 6.5 is 325,000. So the actual distance from point X to point Y is 325,000 centimeters. Try the fraction method and see if you get the same answer. By the way, we can convert this distance to kilometers. Recall that 100,000 centimeters makes one kilometer. So to convert, we divide by 100,000 to get 3.25 kilometers. Let's solve a currency exchange problem. Jake is heading to the USA from Jamaica and wants to exchange 56,000 Jamaican dollars for US dollars. The exchange rate is one US dollar equals 160 Jamaican dollars. Let's find out how many US dollars he can get. When doing money conversion problems, we multiply by the rate if converting from a stronger to a weaker currency and divide when converting from a weaker to a stronger currency. In this case, the US currency is stronger. So we divide by the amount of Jamaican dollars Jake has. 
by the exchange rate of 160. So 56,000 divided by 160 is 350. Therefore, Jake can purchase 350 US dollars with his 56,000 Jamaican dollars. Another way to solve the problem is to use proportions by writing the given exchange rate as a ratio expressed as a fraction. We can put US over JMD. So one US dollar to Jamaican dollar 160 is equal to an unknown amount of US dollars to Jamaican dollar 56,000. We can call the unknown amount N. Cross multiply to solve. So 160 N equals 56,000. Divide both sides by 160 and we get an equals 350. The same answer as before. A rate is a ratio that compares two quantities with different units. For example, 60 kilometers per hour, $5 per liter, or four mangoes for $100. Notice how each rate has different units being compared. That's what makes it a rate. Now let's see how this applies to shopping, especially when you're trying to find the best bargain. So you go to the market and one vendor is selling four mangoes for $100, while another vendor is selling five mangoes for $130. Which is the better deal? Always ask yourself, what's the cost per one? Once you know that, Comparing is easy. We can use unit rates to compare. The unit rate in this case is the cost for one mango. To find the unit rate, we divide the total cost by the number of mangoes. So for the deal on the left, $100 divided by four equals $25 per mango. Now do the same for the deal on the right. $130 divided by five equals $26 per mango. So even though the deal on the right gives you more mangoes, the deal on the left is the better deal because you pay less for one mango. That's the power of ratio, rates, and proportions. They can help us to make smart decisions that give us the best outcomes in everyday life. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video from Adobe Math Lab, where math meets adventure.